All right, hey guys, we actually had a patch last night in Heroes of the Storm. Now we're gonna go through the patch notes and see what has happened. I haven't seen these yet, so all new to me. Alarak, Blade of the High Lord trait, adjusted functionality. Basic attack sends enemy heroes, give 2% sadism up to 30%. Sadism is gained from Blade of the High Lord lost on death. What the fuck? Okay. Uh, what? You serious right now? That seems broken. So he can just get like a permanent 30% sadism? Like that is, that's ridiculous. Like that is way, way over tuned. Just basic attacking some heroes, you build up some sadism. I mean, compared to this, like five basic attacks to, against a hero versus your allied heroes are gonna die. I mean, I guess it depends what sort of comps you have and what level of play you're playing at. That seems really over tuned to me. That seems pretty easy to stack that up to 30% in a lot of situations. Compared to like Rite of Rakshir, where you have to kill someone with the mark to gain the permanent 5% bonus versus you just basic attack him a few times and there you go. That seems kind of overpowered. We'll see. Gaul, keep moving. Movement speed bonus duration increased from 1 to 2. Basic attacks against heroes no longer increase the movement speed duration of an active shove. That makes sense. Cho'Gal aren't really that much of a basic attacky type hero anyway. We see you. Cooldown reduction increased from 15 to 25. Okay. Double back. Third bounce of Dread Orb does 50% bonus damage to heroes. Really hard to hit that. Uh, Edge of Madness. Q. Window before damage bonuses are lost. Increased from 4 to 7 seconds. Holy shit. They're massive buffs. Um, does Gaul count as a, an assassin in here? I think he does. Where is he? I thought he came out around Greymane release. They're just in Warrior. Okay. So, double back. That's the... You can activate the Dread Orb to reverse the third bounce. And it's going to do bonus damage to heroes and non-heroes. This one is now really good. Uh, subsequent hits of your Shadow Flame against the hero do more damage up to 40%. It's a three second cooldown, you now have seven seconds. You should have that up very consistently. An Ogre Rampage uh, increases damage bonus of your Ogre Rage by 5% and your abilities cool down faster when Cho activates his thing. Okay, pretty interesting. Shadow Snare, 10 to 15, stacks two times instead of three. That's a big buff then. So uh, it's basically, uh, yeah, 15% slow stacks twice instead of 10% stacks three times. So it builds up twice as fast. Pretty damn good. Uh, Lead and Orb, the stun duration is increased to 0.75 seconds, which is relatively significant stun. Uh, I'm not sure what the situation with Chogal overall is with their bomb build and stuff at the moment. Needless to say, Deafening Blast is pretty insane when you combine it with Runic Feedback. You can get really high uptime on it. But yeah, that might mix up their, their builds. Uh, looking at Cho as well. Yeah, so it could be a very, very different hero. Ether Walker buffed again. Casting Teleport causes Li Ming's next cast of Magic Missiles to deal 10% increased damage. That probably becomes pretty damn good then. Uh, Triumvirate cooldown reduction increased from 50%. Well, what's that now? So yeah, Ether Walker, they just keep buffing that thing. Okay, Triumvirate. Uh, if Arcane Orb hits an enemy hero after traveling at least 50% of its base range, the cooldown is reduced by 5 seconds. That's an increase. Ah, that is a nice increase. So instead of knocking four seconds off, it knocks five seconds off. Okay, cool. Arcane Orbs, cooldown reduction reduced from two to one on this one. Uh, okay, this should increase the total cooldown reduction of an Arcane Orb hitting with the Triumvirate proc from five seconds to six seconds when Triumvirate and Zay's Vengeance are both taken. We're going to get you to want to pick Ether Walker, just you wait. Yeah, they, they're just gonna add out extra effects. Like, eventually it's just going to be Ether Walker teleport insta kills people. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, Lunara, Blossom Swell. Hitting an enemy hero with noxious blossoms increases your movement speed. Eh, okay. It doesn't seem that useful, but there you are. I still feel she's pretty cookie cutter. Um, Mind Devour. Bonus damage reduced for Orphea. Interesting. Level 7. Okay, cool. Uh, Rainer's Raiders has a bigger leash range. That's cool. I like that, actually. I actually like that a lot. It makes them easier to control and move around. Um, it could even be fun to make that kind of a global at some point. Just move it wherever you want. 
I guess it'd be kind of overpowered, but it'd be interesting. Uh, Samoro, maybe some buffs. Wave the blade. Reduce the physical armor of enemy heroes hit by crit by 10 for two seconds. That's pretty cool. Samoro. Because he it's pretty, hit pretty hard. It's a critical strike every three seconds and reduces physical armor. That's pretty good. Uh, and wave the wind. Samoro's critical strikes reduce the cooldown of wind walk. That's also pretty good. Okay. Um, yep, yeah, wave the Lucian is dominated, of course. Okay, cool. Interesting stuff there. Could be worth looking at Samoro again. Maybe there's some interesting builds there. Bob and Weave. Oh, gives Taika some extra range. That's pretty cool. Um, I mean, level 20 with Tychus has been relatively set in stone for a good while. You know, like, system attacks is just pretty terrible. Both of these are really good. So, yeah. Um, it's not bad, actually. You know, like, reducing the mana cost, giving you more range is pretty nice. Uh, will it compete with Big Red Button? I don't know. 50% longer Odin plus the nuke. Or just, you know, extra range and building up damage on the diodes. I think that it, it is actually competitive with those. That seems like a really good change to me. Uh, it helps you get a lot more value out of your minigun, all the rest. Um, Specialist Asmodan. Uh, Globe of Annihilation, the damage scaling has been reduced. Uh, level 1, Greed. New functionality. Globe does 20% bonus damage to non-heroes after gaining uh, 200. Increase the range of all shell burn by 20%. Demon Warriors gain 20% movement speed and attack speed. That seems pretty cool. What did he have instead of that? So the old Greed... So Gluttony is hitting heroes. Uh, Wrath is with the basic attack. I can't remember what Greed was, but that's nice. 20% more damage. I mean, I guess it's okay. Uh, yeah, it's certainly an interesting one. I, I like it. I like the the combination there of like the different choices. I still feel that Gluttony is probably the best, but there you are. Um, cool. Uh, Sin's Grasp. All shall burn. Slows enemies by 15% during its channel. If it finishes, increase the slow to 45% by 2 seconds. And reduce the cooldown of all shall burn by 50%. Uh, I mean, it's pretty interesting. It makes it... That's a massive power spike, of course, on all shall burn build. Uh, for example, with this one, with the extra range. Um, yeah. Hmm. What else would you synergize with that? I don't know. All shall burn explodes. Uh, reduce the channel time. That's pretty dope. Heals him up. Um, and then you probably get this. You can't get the thing that buffs the demon warriors, unfortunately. If you take this one. Reduce the cooldown. I mean, you could still get Hell's Rift, maybe, and combo that with the demon warrior thing. It's maybe decent. And, you know, I don't know. Get, like, the get the uh, army of hell. Like, drop in an army of hell and follow up with your, your thing. Could be okay. Wow, the cooldown reduced on Trample from 60 to 20 seconds. Wow. Okay. All right, interesting changes to Asmo. Medivh, Temporal Flux. Cooldown reduction gain, uh, change from 1 second per basic attack, 3 seconds per Arcane Rift hits, 3% per basic attack, and 9% per Arcane Rift hits. Okay, so it's heroic cooldowns, I guess. Ah, I see. So it's because the heroics have different uh, cooldowns. They want it to just be a percentage based rather than flat. Okay, that's an interesting change, actually. And it's rather unusual to see percentage-based stuff, so they're bringing that in with this patch, which is kind of kind of funky. Null gate range increased. Okay. That's cool. I like that as well. That's pretty nice, because it is an underpicked heroic, so that's cool. Uh, Zagara. Baneling Massacre increases the damage of Banelings. That's now exceptionally good. Viscous Acid. The slow is stronger and lasts significantly longer. Bile Drop. Quest completion and requirement drop from 15 to... From unobtainable to still probably unobtainable. Uh, that's pretty That's pretty cool. I think now with Zagara, you got a couple of really nice synergies then with her things. Either you're getting Volatile Acid plus Baneling Massacre for really just destroying Merc Camps and Minion Waves extremely quickly. Or you might go for the Infest plus the Viscous Acid. Um, so kind of sticking near your minion waves and pushing with them and having viscous acid as a bit of appeal Those would be the two big choices for me looking at this now. So there you go uh, Anna, I have Horus cooldown massively increased slumber shells uh, Hitting a hero with sleep dart gives you movement speed. I think that's a sensible uh, Decision so just some flat movement speed that even helps you moving up. You know, it's just more reliable Reliable, so you could move out maybe a little bit more aggressively to fire the sleep dart and have the movement speed to reposition a bit. Debilitating dart has been buffed, and night terrors cooldown of sleep dart 
um, change from 6 to 5 seconds. Still pretty damn good. Lily has been nerfed and nerfed. Healing Brew has been nerfed. Talents Eager Adventure has been buffed. And Blessing of Yulon has been nerfed. Okay, there you are. For how Lily, <laughs> for how easy Lily is to play, she's simply too powerful and popular. Yeah, exactly. Really, really, really straightforward, consistent hero. Uh, White Mane, basic attack period reduced from 0.75 to 0.85. I don't understand what that means exactly. Basic attack damage increased substantially. And Searing Damage, Searing Lash Damage increased a little bit too. And more self-healing. Okay, looking at White Mane's underlying issues with mana management. And her talents and base mechanics. Okay, push some small buffs. Make her feel better. She has a normally high basic attack speed combined with very low damage, reducing her attack speed as she's not the kind of character that can turn on enemy heroes like Tychus can. We're buffing her damage to be much greater so those attacks more meaningfully interact with Zeal. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Okay, cool. So you're going to attack slower but hit harder. And it'll be easier to stutter step and whatnot. Cool. Uh, Warrior Cho. Health buffed a bit and health regen buffed a bit. Power Surge, but I don't really know what that is, so. Chogal. Power Surge. What's it here? Surging Fist lowered cooldown against heroes. Now it's five seconds per. Okay, cool. A level 13. Now Surging Dash. Heal while Surging Fist is channeling. Twilight Veil, Molten Block. And Twilight Veil is double armor bonus for four seconds on a 30 second cooldown. Okay. Level 16, then we have Frenzied Fist. Attack speed after using Surging Fist. Runic feedback still there. And basic attacks reduce the cooldown of your both of their heroic abilities by 5%. So like that, just percentage-based cooldown. So I guess it makes it worse for Hammer of Twilight and probably the same for Upheaval, I would guess. Something like that. That's interesting. Um, survivability of Chogol. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, So Chogol, Chogol is actually relatively squishy. They're relatively vulnerable. Oftentimes. Um, so they tend to play that more bomb build, like long range poke, basically. Uh, they've increased the cooldown of the Q and the E on Diablo. I think that makes sense because they're very, very uh, pretty powerful. I I'm sorry, this is all me. It's all me. Diablo's always banned. I apologize. I'm sorry. Uh, ooh, Leora got some changes. I like Leora a lot. Let's see what he's got. Spectral Leech at 13. Basic attacks. Oh, against heroes do bonus damage and heal. Well, now that is interesting. And Hardened Bones is up here. Gain armor while Drain Hope is active. Intriguing. Intriguing. I mean, this is a very competitive talent here. Like, these are all really good talents then. That's a, that's a pretty cool one. That's a cool one. But, uh, yeah, Ominous Wraith, of course, at 13 is pretty insane. It is cool and unique. I feel like they could probably ner maybe nerf it a bit. I don't know. I feel like most people don't really appreciate, certainly, like, lower or mid-levels. They certainly don't appreciate, I don't think, the power of Ominous Wraith at all. Um, but, yeah. Mulliganus, health nerfed, health regen nerfed, mana cost increased. So, okay. People don't like playing against Mulliganus, so they're going to nerf him because of that. Rexar, health buffed, health regen buffed, basic attack damage buffed a lot. Misha damage nerfed. Okay, Misha charge damage. Whoa! Almost tripled. Okay, and the Bestial Wrath bonus damage increased as well. Huh. They must have nerfed this. Yeah, okay. There we are. Uh, they reduced the cooldown reduction aspect of the beast and they nerfed Dire Beast. Still though, holy shit. Okay. Huh. Uh... Rexar has been extremely, um, uh, has had a really good win rate, but people complain that they don't feel impactful. <laughs> oh, man. I love, uh, fun. <laughs> oh, boy. I love it. I fucking love it, man. Brilliant stuff. Oh, the funness of, of game design. Okay. Uh, okay. They're moving power out of automatic things that Misha does into things that Rexar himself is actively doing, like using his basic attacks and making Misha stun enemies. Okay, and then they obviously had to nerf those talents because they'd be OP if they triple the damage of the stun. Alright. Sonya, Giant Slammer, now heals damage for the Sonya for the damage dealt. I can't quite remember what that does. I think it's just max percentage health on the slam. Yep, and it heals her for the damage dealt. That's cool. Uh, hard to compete against the other two, but 
makes it more competitive for sure. So that's good. Uh, this thing has been buffed. Divine Vigor has been buffed. Purge Evil has been buffed. Um, I mean, don't they? Blizzard. I mean, seriously. So, you know, damaging hero. It's all the basic attack builds. It's my doing. I mean, Blizzard. I, I don't know what, what's wrong with Blizzard. I mean, I, I got so many comp When I said that the fucking basic attack build was shit when they first reworked Tyrael, I got so many comments. Like, unbelievable. Like, torrents of comments telling me how stupid I was and that it was clearly the best one. Uh, Blizzard, you need to read those comments and stop. You need to stop buffing the basic attack build. Guys, go back to that fit. I'm serious. Everyone told me it's OP and that I'm an idiot. So I don't know why you're buffing it. Doesn't make any sense to me. They're underperforming. Nothing to see here. Move along. There is, though. What about the? What about all those YouTube comments insulting me? I don't get it. Anyway, all right, that's a pretty nice patch actually. I, I like how they're touching up a lot of heroes. Uh, there's some pretty, uh, pretty substantial changes. Like Rexar is going to play quite differently. Be interested to try maybe that talent with Leoric, though. I do love the Wraith Walk stuff so much. Uh, nerfing some heroes because they're popular. Uh, I think the Lily nerfs do make sense, and the Ana nerfs make a little bit of sense as well. Quite interesting with Zagara. Actually, there's some nice buffs to Zagara. Um, some interesting percentage uh, cooldown reduction on abilities. Um, potentially some larger changes out there on Asmodan. No Samuro gonna get, be a little bit better, seeing as he's hella nerfed. And then some minor tweaks that don't make too much difference. Or Bill Li Ming, maybe, could be pretty solid now. Big changes to Chogal. I need to play them. And then this seems like a rather large buff to the Alarak. So yeah, lots of stuff in that patch. And there you go, guys. Oh, pretty cool. Pretty cool.